Here's a problem that a lot of students are going to struggle with. They don't understand how to get that answer. And I think a lot of times it just comes when we have a fraction raised to a negative exponent. So what I want to do in this video is kind of explain this, how we get to this point, and how we can be able to find the answer so quickly in our head. So it all comes into taking numbers and raising them to a power. Now if I had 2 raised to the first power, we know that's just going to be a 2. If I have a 2 squared, that's going to equal 4, and a 2 cubed is equal to an 8. Now this is one thing that I tell my students to do. Whenever we get confused or whenever we have a problem, we're like, ah, I don't know what to do, like do a brain dump. Start writing down things that you do know and start looking for patterns. In this case, you can see as I start working myself down, right, and this is one of those hard questions of like what's 2 to the 0, well, we can follow some patterns here. If I have 8, to go to 4, what am I doing? I'm dividing by 2. To go from 4 to 2, what am I doing? Dividing by 2. So we can kind of write a nice little conjecture and try to see that, hey, well, you know, if I divide by 2 again, that's going to get me to a 1. What if I did that again? Well, then I would have a 1 divided by 2, which is be 1 half. But what number should I write here? So now we look at the powers. 3, 2, 1, 0. Well, if I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm subtracting a 1, so that is going to get me to a negative 1. And if I did it again, right, 2 to the negative second power, What's 1 half divided by 2? Well, again, just keep on dividing by 2. That's going to be a 1 fourth. And hopefully you kind of recognize here, these are going to be the powers in the numerator, right? And then these are the exact same ones in the denominator. So therefore, I can kind of now, again, conjecture that this is going to be a 1 over 8. So now we have a property. We can now say that a raised to the negative nth power is just going to equal the reciprocal of a to the n, OK? So that's going to be one of those reciprocal properties that we get. Now, what is that going to do with fractions? Well, crap. Because like, that's an integer. You have a problem with fractions. So let's do the same thing. 1 half right, to the 0 power, we're going to assume is going to be 1. If I have 1 half raised to the first power, we know that's going to be 1 half. If I have a 1 half squared, well, that's 1 half times 1 half. That's going to be a 1 to the fourth. OK, and sorry if I was going to fit this in here. Well, I guess hopefully you can recognize. Now let's just go down this way. So what am I doing now as I kind of work my way down because I ran out of space? What I'm doing is I'm not divided by 2, right? I'm multiplying by 2. 1 fourth times 2 is again equal to a 1 half, OK? And then 1 half to 1, multiplying by 2 again. So we can now presume here, let's continue this pattern here. So 1 half to the negative first power multiplied by 2 again is going to be a 2. Wait a minute here. 1 half times the negative second power multiplied by 2 again is going to give you a 4. You can see it's like the exact inverted of what we had over here. So now we can come up with another rule. We can say 1 over a to the negative n is going to equal to an a to the n. So you might be like, Mr. McCulligan, you still didn't answer the question. This works for numbers. What about fractions? Or it works for integers. What about fractions? Well, here's the cool thing about this property. This is, um, here's the cool thing about this fraction. When we have powers, what we can do is we can also take those powers and we can apply them to the numerator as well as to the denominator, right? Because they're just a number and numerator denominator, so we can distribute this negative um, 2. So therefore, I can rewrite this as a 3 to the negative second power divided by a 4 to the negative second power. Now, applying these two rules, I can now say 4 to the negative first power, since it's in the denominator, it's the same thing as a 4 squared. 3 to the negative second power, since it's in the numerator here, can now go in the denominator as a positive power. Now, 4 squared is just 4 times 4, which is equal to 16. And 3 squared is going to be 3 times 3, which is going to be a 9. And it's the exact same answer I got in my head. So hopefully, you have a better understanding here with fractions of why, whenever we have a fraction raised to a negative power, you can just easily and quickly go ahead and reciprocate it. Hopefully, this video gave you some help and some better understanding. If it did, then I know I'm going to see you in the next video. Cheers.